Um, <laughs> usually I do have so much fun at these things. This has obviously been a different experience for a lot of reasons. What can you tease about what's going on? Um, well, I feel like we have now reached the point in the season where all uh, roads lead to the flame. The thing that came out of, of Lex's head really is the MacGuffin. Everybody wants it. The new commander, whoever wins the Conclave, is going to need it to ascend. You know, you, you fight to the death and then you put it in your head. I don't know if you guys saw the, the clip, so you cut. No, okay, I won't ruin it then. But um, the new commander needs it to ascend. Um, Clark wants to make sure that the right person gets it to carry on Lex's legacy and uh, make sure that her people aren't going to be wiped out by whoever gets it next. Allie, in the other story, has been looking for it for a hundred years, and she wants it. And so, you know, all roads lead to the flame, and it becomes um, a very focused story post-episode uh, nine is a, a different story. It's a very emotional episode, and it has um, a lot of things in it that, that will be hard for people to watch, but it's a, a very special episode in many ways. Um uh, but the story of the flame uh, from the Arcadia side of it, from the Alley side of it, is taking a week off. In 10 is when that really begins to ramp up in a huge, huge way. Is the City of Light an actual location, or is it strictly metaphor? Um, it is an actual location. The question is, you know, the, the question is what's real and what's not. So it is an actual location. We now know that people take the chip and it somehow uh, incorporates itself into your mind, and it allows you to upload your consciousness, your mind, to the city of light, where it takes away your pain and all your problems, and um, you know, some people would really want to take something like that. I can relate. Um, and ultimately, it is something that is real for those people. They love being there. It's a, it's a, it's a uh, blissful, you know. The question is, what is, is it human? The question is, you know, is it real? With life without, without pain, you know, does that really exist? You know, do you need pain to be happy, to understand what happiness is? I think you do. I think, you know, the light and the dark, without the light there is no dark. That's kind of the story we're telling. Um, anyway, not to be too mumbo jumbo -y. Um, um, I mean, there's a certain aspect of it for sure. I mean, they didn't ask, uh, they didn't ask for permission to land here. They sort of crashed into this world, and um, there's not a lot of options. And so, um, but to fight for your uh, people, Pike believes that you know his his experience was very different than than Kane's experience vis-a-vis -vis the grounders. You know, obviously he he landed in the ice station and lost everybody, you know, half, I don't remember the number, but a ton of people, way more than, than Arcadia did. And um, it informed his worldview, and uh, I think in dark ways, that, that I think people don't necessarily like him very much. And I don't, I don't blame them. But he thinks he's doing what's best for his, for his people, as everybody in this show does. I mean, that's kind of the theme of the show, is everybody's always doing what they think is the best thing for themselves. Sadly, in the world, that's the case, too. I think a lot of times it's about how do we transcend that and figure out, you know, what's best for all of us. Um, maybe Clark is trying to get to a place where that can be true. Um, we'll see. Thanks, guys. I do, too. Thank you, guys.